insane Hydra draft results. So much information. Let's go. What's up, guys? MTG Jedi here. How are you doing this morning? I am running my team again because I just needed to see what's going on. And as you can see, we're getting just... Oh, man. Uh, ever since... Well, okay, let me back up, right? Um, so this is my Hydra draft team. And I think that I'm about to get some really bad RNG here again. We had no provoke up here on this head of, what is this? The head of decay. And then <laughs> we got the life barrier in there. So we got our Tumesia consumed. Um, but anyway, uh, even though there's a lot of damage potential in this team, uh, I figured out one of the things that actually makes a huge difference in your damage runs for Hydra along the way. Uh, I'm going to show you a lot of different information here today. I'm going to let you know what happened yesterday. I would encourage you to go back and watch the actual uh, tournament runs for the Hydra draft because so interesting and so much information with all of us just hanging out on stream on Deadwood's channel, talking about our runs while we're doing them, talking about our teams. I'm going to show you the gear um and figure out all of the stuff we can see the turn limit there right uh which is pretty important as well one thing that i figured out that made really a huge difference on my team and maybe it's impacting your team as well is this passive here on the head of suffering decreases damage all hydra heads taken from aoe attacks by 30 percent and when you have a champion like Terrace or Husk or somebody doing big AoE hits like that, then this head of suffering really takes away the damage from you. And so when you're doing your Hydra runs, if you can do a couple different runs where you're, you know, looking for the most damage, what you want to look for are runs where all four of the heads they don't have Head of Suffering. And the rotations where Head of Suffering's not there, that's where you're going to have your most damage potential. So, um, like this run here is pretty similar to what happened on stream. I had Head of Suffering pop up every single time. And uh, we have uh, Ragash Eaton right now, who's my mischief target. And so... Then all the buffs got stolen on Terrace. That happened, uh, oh my goodness, so many times. But we are able to reach a really long amount of time in this fight thanks to Terrace. Terrace is ridiculous for this game mode. He's so crazy, guys. Now, on here... You know, we're ending the end of the run. It's going to end pretty similar to what I had before. Um, but, you know, that's not really what happened in my testing. I was averaging with this team about 184 million damage was what I was averaging. And then um, you'll be able to see, I'll, I'll put on screen, I mentioned last night on stream, my highest run was... 206 million and in that run the main thing that happened was the head of suffering didn't pop as much we had multiple times where we did not have the head of suffering and then i was able to kill all four heads much more quickly and so i was able to cycle back through all of my abilities i was able to do a lot a lot more damage because the head of suffering was not there and i actually think the head of suffering needs nerfed believe it or not i think that he is the stupidest most ridiculous head and that's crazy because there are some really really terrifying ones but the head of suffering has an over nine thousand defense all of the other heads have a normal amount, like three, four, maybe 5,000 defense. The Head of Suffering has 9,000 defense. And that just really makes it quite unfair. So, 
Um, and in addition, that passive with the AoE damage, I think is one of the main reasons why people struggle in Hydra. I mean, granted, there's a lot of things that can happen, right? <laughs> you can die to the Head of Wrath, you can get all the poisons, you can get all of your debuffs cleansed off, all of these things, okay? Um, but... You know, I think the real problem is the Head of Suffering. That's my opinion. And I hope Polarium comes in and nerfs him because especially for new players, they don't even realize how much the Head of Suffering is making them suffer, okay? And next of all, um, the Head of Suffering gets an extra turn, which I think is really problematic. Especially once you get to these two-turn cooldowns when your champions are eaten, you are going to see that the Head of Suffering can just go and eat a champion and you have no choice about it. He'll just take two turns on his next turn and then you will be in the dust. So here we ended up with 139. Uh, I know that, you know, that seems like uh, similar to what I did in my other run. But like I said, it's all about how many times that Head of Suffering pops up. In this run and in the run last night, I believe, we had that Head of Suffering pop up almost every single time, and that changes a lot of the difference with all of my AoE attacks on Razzlevarg, all of my AoE attacks on Uko, and then Terrace's massive damage, okay? Now, in this run, Tumisia got eaten early when she should not have due to some bad luck, okay? But you can see we're doing an incredible amount of damage. Uko did 13 million because of those AoE attacks. Cardiol did 14 million just because he's getting so many turns. Ragash, 19 million. Razzlevarg, 18 million. And then Tumisia and Terrace up in the 30s here. 30 million damage is so crazy. And look at the healing, right? We have 9 million damage in healing, 9 million total healing, points of healing, I don't know how you want to say it, from Cardiol, and Terris healed himself 6.7 million. It's incredible, guys. It's absolutely incredible. So I hope that you guys can take away from this all of these amazing champions that we've discovered from the Hydra draft, okay? So let me walk you through uh, just a couple things on the gear. Uh, I might do a specific video on Dundan because he was amazing. He was absolutely amazing. And um, he's going to be really good for a lot of people on their account, okay? What I needed was more damage, not more survivability. Uh, thanks to Terrace's passive, okay? And um, right... Let me see. When attacked, decreases the enemy's attack up to 10%, or by 10%, up to 25% against bosses. And man, this is so, so good. This attack reduction is like double decrease attack. It's the main reason why Terrace is so good in Hydra. Not his insane multipliers or the rest of his kit. It's that part of his passive there, okay? Um, there's so many little things about this team that make it incredible, all right? Tumisia is immune to provoke and fear. That's two of the biggest debuffs that come in this fight. This A3 does an incredible amount of damage. Her AoE does great damage. Plus, she can place decreased speed and HP burn. Her A1 has decreased defense. I don't need to go through the whole kits, but I just want to show you here um, the total stats in case you were not uh, available to see them. Um, and then Terrace here is in Savage. And protection, cardial in a ridiculous build here with relentless and speed. Uh, Mighty Uko in provoke. That was really key to keeping the the head provoked. Um, last night, Ragash was missing his gloves for some reason. 
I'm not sure why he was missing his gloves, but I put them back on this morning. It did not make that made that big of a difference. The biggest difference was the head of suffering popping up when it would pop up. Um, and then over here we have Razzlevarg also in um uh what's the what's the word? Provoke. And you can see my champions are going really fast. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's everybody. If you have these champions, guys, I really encourage you to use them in Hydra. Okay, let me go ahead and put my best run on the screen so that you can see it as well as we wrap up the video here. Here you go. So you can see I was able to get 206 million damage. And the main reason that happened, again, was that Head of Suffering not popping up. I had multiple times in the run with no Head of Suffering, and that led to a lot more damage. Still the same kind of turn count, okay? I was able to last a bit more turns, but you can see the run time, 59 minutes. And then you can see the total damage here. Tumesia, 55 million. Terrace, 52 million. Ragash and Razzlevarg 26 27, Cardial 22, Uko 18, absolutely ridiculous. And um, my dude Roz, who was an absolute master helping me through this whole thing, I uh, could not have done this without you, Roz. He actually told me that this is a global leaderboard record in 11th place. And if you guys know me, 11 is my favorite number, so I'll take it. Um, he and I were talking about some ways to actually improve this if we were able to use my whole champion pool. So I might actually work on that and see if I can see if I could get even more damage than this, which would be absolutely crazy. I wish I could have had a better run on stream or even in this video. But as you can tell, it takes so long for these runs. We can't just do that many, even though I did a lot in preparation for this. So we have the 11th place global record. This is actually the best team I've ever built. And again, could not have done it without Roz. A lot of this, uh, he and I collaborating here, he had a lot of great ideas to start with. And then I was able to come in and, and pick out some things, do some gearing. But Roz really pushed me to continue working on this team. Even once I had hit 140 million, he's like, no, keep going. I know you can hit 200. And so today, even though it wasn't during the draft, we did hit the 200 million. And that was such a great achievement. I'm really proud of this. Thank you guys all for your support during this process. It's been a great experience. I know I was uh, perhaps a little underrated in the draft, and that's okay. Maybe next time we won't be as underrated. But you never know. It's all good. And make sure that you come back out. I'll be hosting Deadwood Jedi stream while I'm streaming on Twitch. So if you're here on YouTube... Go to Deadwood Stream on YouTube. If you're a Twitch person and you want to hang out on Twitch with me, I'm going to be streaming the draft tournament tonight with the other group. We'll have four more competitors on there. We're going to also pull some shards. I'm going to go record some shard pull videos as well for you guys today. It's just going to be a lot of information, a lot of entertainment today on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Ask all your questions in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video, probably in just a little bit.